Hey everyone, it's Danielle Taylor with Keller Williams Realty here on the beautiful Outer Banks. And I will tell you, we are having an unseasonably warm time uh, this February, so we are really enjoying it. I think yesterday we hit close to 80 degrees. Um, definitely gets me in the mood for summer, so hopefully it does the same for you. Um, it is Stats Day again. I cannot believe it. Another month has gone by, um, and February short, so this is gonna be an extra uh, quick one as well. Um, but January 2023 is really what we're talking about today. Day. And just a reminder that all of the information is courtesy of the Outer Banks Association of Realtors, and it's through January 31st, 2023. So let's dive in. I'm going to change things up a little bit and more talk in themes and trends going forward. We've, we've sort of gone through all the shift metrics. We know we're in a shift. I feel like that's yesterday's news. I feel like what I want to talk about is really where we're seeing things go and trend. Um, so I think the best way that I could characterize today's chat is I'm calling it mind the gap. And what I mean by that is there's still a gap between buyer and seller expectations. And that's really what's happening that we're seeing with the metrics now is that those changes and those discrepancies are showing up in how the uh, data is looking. So the first reason that I'm, I'm still seeing that there's a gap is overall inventory. So our overall inventory continues to rise. It was up 24% over December. So January inventory up 24% over December and up a whopping 49% over January of 2022. So inventory levels are rising. Even though, here's the thing to realize, even though new listing inventory continues to be down. So January new listing inventory was down 34% January over January. And incidentally, I went back and looked, that was the lowest new listing inventory in the month of January since back to 2004, which was really when our MLS started tracking it that I can go back to. So that's a really interesting statistic. So overall inventory rising, but new inventory less. So that means stuff is sitting. So inventory not priced right, see the gap, is growing and becoming stale. So that's the first reason I know that gap is still there. And unfortunately that gap is still growing. Um, the second reason we know the gap is still there is days on market. So days on market continues to steadily increase. It was 67 for sold inventory in the month of January, um, which was 24% up over December and 49% up over January. Okay, so that's a really interesting statistic as well. So days on market sitting longer. Um, the third thing that I'm seeing when it comes to the gap is the median sale price. So our median single family sold price for January was down 4.5% over January of 2022. So we are seeing a little bit of that price compression um, on the median. So we need to watch that. The last thing that I'm seeing is that we are now sitting at about two thirds of our inventory selling under asking price at an average of about 97%. This was sitting at 52%. So we're at two thirds now over 66% versus 52% back in January of 22. And back in January of 22, our average sold to ask price was 99. So 97 to 99. So we are seeing that compression of what the buyer's willing to pay versus what the seller's asked for, okay? So that's, that's where I'm saying we still have this gap. Now, I don't wanna be all doom and gloom because there are some signs that the buyers and sellers are starting to mind that gap and we're starting to see it close a little bit. Here's the first sign that I'm seeing, price adjustments. So while we're still seeing price adjustments, um, for sold single family residential, it was the lowest number of price, lowest percentage of price adjustments that were needed before the property sold that I've seen since August of 22. So that's a good sign. So that sat at 28% of the homes that sold in January had a price reduction before doing so. 
are under contract and active listings that are in the MLS, about a third of them have had a price reduction and that's been holding pretty consistent. That average price reduction for those actually went down a little bit. So it was 8.7% in December and it's down to 8.2% for January. So that's a little sign that we're starting to see those prices become more in line. The other positive sign is that the new listings that are coming on and are priced appropriately, 60% of those were under that came on in January have already sold or are under contract. And the average days on market for those was 12. Guys, 12 versus 67 for the overall sold. So that's a really interesting statistic as well. And it shows you that when you do mine the gap, that market is still there and the buyers are still there. Um, the last sign that I'm seeing is watching the number of properties that are selling over asking, because that's sort of giving us an indication of what the demand is. And we're seeing that hold steady at 9%. So 9%, just under 10% of the properties are still selling over asking. So I think that's a good sign. Um, just as a side note, distressed properties, zero. Zero in inventory in January, zero sold. So still non-existent in this market. So overall, here's my takeaways from this. We are holding our prices for the most part, and that's really due to lack of new inventory. So overall inventory up, but new inventory low, that's keeping the pressure on the prices to stay strong. However, you cannot overprice or you will sit and become stale. You'll be one of the guys sitting at 67 days plus. Um, the other thing is that I dove into, if you don't get my newsletter, please make sure you subscribe below to get it because I do break out this information more by town. And there's two takeaways when I'm looking at the towns. The first is there's a huge discrepancy in the supply of homes by town. So for instance, we've got a low of about one and a half months worth of supply in Kitty Hawk versus a high of about 5.7 months in Collington Harbor. So please make sure, actually not the Harbor, all of Collington. So please make sure you're paying attention to that. The other thing that's varying drastically by town is the days on market. So we've got a low in Kitty Hawk of 20 days on market average for sold single family residential. However, we've got a high of 117 in Duck, which is a huge discrepancy. These changes also are, or discrepancies are also there for pricing, all those kinds of things. So again, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter if you don't get it, um, and to the channel so you don't miss any of these updates. I will see you guys soon with some more information. Have a wonderful day.